Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> Bear yeah. Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. We're <laughs> paying for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear, exclusively the Home Depot day here in Greensboro as Big South football takes place for the first time in the Gate City here at Truist Stadium. It's the Big South on ESPN3. Hello and welcome inside the broadcast booth. Spencer Turkin alongside my partner Stan Luter. History in the making. Stan, great to be a part of it. It's going to be an exciting run for both of these teams in the Big South. Both these programs have a lot of history. North Carolina T with their BAC championships and all that that goes with that, the NEC championships from the past from Robert Morris. Two great programs on a historic Saturday afternoon. That is for sure, and we have two tough runners to feature in this one. Yeah, you're going to enjoy watching the styles of two outstanding running backs. Elijah Jackson has rushed for a thousand yards a couple of times. He's an inside-outside guy, had a big game last week against Howard. And then there's Kishon Baker. His first 100-yard game was last Saturday in the win against North Carolina Central. He's that guy that can do a little bit of everything. He can catch balls out of the backfield. He gets in between the tackles. But what he really can do is run and run and run some more. Jackson Baker, keep your eyes on these two guys. And both of these young men are going to have plenty of opportunities to touch the football. These two squads are run first teams. Yeah, they like to pound it inside out. And this is going to be one of those games in which team can control the line of scrimmage has an opportunity to win today. The Big South kicks off for the first time in Greensboro. It's coming up next right here on ESPN3. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the new Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> Bear yeah. Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> We're paying for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear, exclusively the Home Depot. on ESPN3 is brought to you in part by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. Ingles. Low prices. Love the savings. Sunbelt Rentals. We have equipment for that. And First Citizens Bank. Forever first. A perfect day for football here in Greensboro. 80 degrees, partly cloudy. And two squads that are ready to kick off Big South play. Robert Morris has won the toss and will defer. a and will receive the opening kickoff. Let's go ahead and get you the Sunbelt starting lineups. a and will begin on offense. Jalen Fowler will quarterback Sam Washington's ball club, but most eyes are going to be on the backfield. Jamain Martin was on the Walter Payton Award watch list and a preseason All-Big South selection. He has come out of the gate a little bit slow. We'll look to see if he will go ahead and have his breakout game today. Along the offensive line, uh, left tackle to be Ricky Lee. DeJore Simpson is the left guard. Dakari Wilson up front is the center. Lawrence Legrone will play right guard, and at right tackle, it'll be Bilal Ali. Over on the outside, Ron Hunt, Corey Banks, and Sterling Burkhalter will get the call as the receiving core. For Robert Morris, all eyes are on middle linebacker Anelio Bazzacco. The 6'1", 230-pound senior was a preseason All-Big South selection. Against Howard last week, had 12 tackles, one for a loss, and half a sack. He is two tackles away from 200 career tackles. 
And Stan, it's time for the Ingles' keys to the game. Well, for Robert Morris, it's about establishing the ground game. They've got to understand that A&T is not allowed a 100-yard rush team to last four ball games. They've got to find a way to run the football and stay out of bad situations. Early in this fall game, you can't turn it over. You can't give up the big play. Robert Morris has only scored 14 points in the first half of ball games. For the Aggies, it's about us. It's simple as that. They want to go out and do the things they do, which also means being consistent, being consistent on offense, defense, and special teams. Tamon Coke back deep for North Carolina A&T. It'll be Michael Benson to kick things off for the Colonials. And we are underway here in Greensboro, and the flag comes out Free kick out as that kick one will be kicked out North of bounds. At the 35 yard line. So North Carolina A&T will begin this ball game at its own 35 yard line. Jalen Fowler, the redshirt junior quarterback, finally getting his opportunity to lead the offense. Went 18 of 26 against North Carolina Central in the last game for 161 yards. Had one touchdown, did not throw the ball away for an interception, and also was not sacked. So here we go. We are ready for the first play as Fowler is in the gun. The handoff, Martin comes along the right side. And he will earn himself a first down on his first touch of the game. And that is more like the John Main Martin that people here in Greensboro are used to seeing. Aggie fans have got to be excited to see Martin. We talked a lot about it a couple of weeks ago about the big games he had, the seven over 100 yards and the 200 yard plus run. He's been nicked up. That was a good run to start on first down. I mentioned a moment ago Robert Morris wants to run the ball. Aggies definitely want to run the football. Good start on their first play. Fowler will send three out to the wide side of the field. It's first and ten. The handoff to Martin again cuts it up for a gain of four. This defensive front for Robert Morris is a team that likes to attack the football. They're going to give you some three-man fronts, some four fronts. They're going to mix it up. And again, if, if they are successful, that means they're attacking the football and able to try to control the line of scrimmage. But very difficult to do against a big, powerful offensive line by the Aggies. It goes about 305 pounds per man. Second and six for the Aggies. Martin in the backfield. He'll take it again, cuts it inside. He's across the 35 and down to the 33. Jamain Martin has been phenomenal to start this one. And a good job at the offensive attack again. And this is what you can expect to see out of the Aggies today. Using that big front line, you see Simpson and DeJour, uh, DeJour Simpson and Ricky Lee and Wilson, number 55. Now Kashawn Baker, who ran for 137 yards last game, will take over, play action. That toss to Banks is corralled for a gain of four. When North Carolina a t is effective on offense, they're able to run the ball when they want and throw any time they need to. But primarily, they're going to try to do the run. You know, we talked about it in pre this week. Teams that try to pass to set up the run, a t is definitely a team that tries to run to set the pass. Twins formation for a t second and seven. New play will come in from the sideline. North Carolina A&T, very deep at the running back position. You already see the second stringer, Baker. This time, he'll take it. And he is finally tripped up at the 30-yard line. That Robert Morris defensive front got after it last week against Howard put a lot of pressure on that Bison backfield. Well, we'll talk about Gozo and Shigog, number 53, their outside backer, leads his teams in tackles in 24. They're, they're not a big team necessarily on front, but they're very quick. Third and six for a &T. Banks, the lone wide out to the short side of the field. Fowler looks, tosses to him, and he holds it in at the 17-yard line. Good for an Aggie first down. 
Nice job that time by Banks. Plenty of time, good protection, finds over the top. And Banks, who has had a really solid year, his 13th reception of the season, goes across the middle, finds that little gap in the zone, able to get the catch and extend this drive for ANT. You see Kingsley Wachuku in as the fullback. Sam Washington likes to use that ground and pound offense. Wachuku, the lead blocker. Baker takes the handoff, and he is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And we just talked about Chicago, who's a guy that goes about 6'1", 230. That's very, very active. He'll play on the weak side linebacker spot, but he can cover a lot of territory. Big, solid hit that time on Baker. It's second and 11 for North Carolina A&T. The Aggies riding a seven-game home winning streak dating back to 2018. Of course, the Aggies did not play a 2020 or 2021 spring season. Single back set, working out of the pistol. And we have a whistle. And it'll be a timeout taken by North Carolina A&T. Chris Barnett, the offensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator didn't like the way the Aggies were lined up. We'll go ahead, we'll step away. 10.28 to go in the first. We're tied at zero here on ESPN3. Power isn't born, it's built over time. Television, television. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hypnotized by it. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gaping at the screen. That nauseating, foul, repulsive screen. Television. Television. No wonder what they ever seen. In that ridiculous machine. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> <laughs> Bear Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> We're paying for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of bear, exclusively at the Home Depot. Tires is the official tire of the Big South Conference and for over 65 years has been providing tires with unbeatable quality at an unmatched value. Whatever the vehicle and whatever the terrain, Hercules Tires invites you to ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. The pass into the corner for Hunt! And he dropped it. Could not hold it towards the back of the end zone. Ron Hunt, another, we talked about Baker a moment ago, but Ron Hunt's had a very solid season. Had those two big touchdown catches in the game against Furman on Labor Day weekend. Nearly came out with his third one, just not able to hold on at the end of the play. Third and 11 for the Aggies. A&T, 46.7% on third down conversions. The throw to the back of the end zone again, and that one just a little too far for Cook. Plenty of time. Again, gritty offensive line. And we'll probably talk a lot about the offensive line for North Carolina A&T as well as Robert Morris throughout this ball game. But another down deep, had man coverage to the outside and just threw it just a little too long and too wide. Cook unable to bring it in for the touchdown. It'll be a 35-yard field goal attempt for Andrew Brown, the reigning Big South Special Team Player of the Week. Went four for four in extra points, three for three on field goals against Central. The kick is up. And it's good. So North Carolina A&T leads it 3-0 with 9.57 to go here in the first. A successful drive down the field for the Aggies. The Aggies scored in position. Starting at their own 35, resulting in three points. Six, and 
And how about that Robert Morris defense coming up strong in the red yeah, zone? They did a nice job in slowing a and and holding them in the field goal. You were afraid early that a and was just going to ground and pound and get the touchdown. But a good job. This is a good Robert Morris defense. I mean, they, they had a tough game against Central Michigan. However, they held him in the first half three times. Two of those, they only allowed them a field goal when they were inside the red zone. This is an aggressive, fast attacking team. So again, a good job by Robert Morris to hold A&T out of the end zone. If you're Coach Washington and crew, you're a little disappointed because you had everything going your way and not able to capitalize with six and then eventually seven points. But a good a good way to start a football game if you're an Aggie fan to get off with the field goal. Robert Morris head coach Bernard Clark, he is no stranger to coaching here in Greensboro, was the Hampton defensive coordinator in 2009, as well as in 2012 and 2013. Class he coached in two game. games in we this building. Eat towards the Greeks. Championships, excellence on every level. More Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the new Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> Bear Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> We're paying for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear. Exclusively the Home Depot. Rib shaped sandwich. Arby's real country style rib sandwich. Hilarious. Glorious. What? What? Restructured pork patty shaped like a miniature rack of ribs. Real country style ribs. On an Arby's sandwich. Arby's, we have the meat. With you here at Truist Stadium. 3 0 North Carolina AT. As Brown will go ahead and send this one deep. And here come the Colonials. It's Jonathan Wynn, and he will step out of bounds, and that will give Robert Morris solid field position to begin its first drive from scrimmage. Well, Stan, Robert Morris head coach Bernard Clark, he is used to coaching in this building, has beaten a and twice as the Hampton defensive coordinator. So here is George Martin, the redshirt senior quarterback. He will... Go ahead and lead Robert Morris out onto the gridiron. Elijah Jackson will get the start behind him. Had his breakout game just a week ago against Howard, and he'll take the first handoff and is driven into the ground by Jacob Roberts. Stop me by number 52, Michael Branch. So it'll bring up second and 11 as we'll go ahead and get you the Sun Belt starting lineups for Robert Morris. George Martin is the quarterback up front. It'll be Trevor Hicks as the left tackle. Dylan Young is the left guard. Trevor Renfro is the center as we get ready for second and 11. Martin back to pass, pump fakes, throws over the middle. That one brought in. And it will be James Westry, the sophomore out of Newark, New Jersey, who's about a yard shy of the first down marker. You're talking about that front group for Robert Morris. Keep your eye on Trevor Renfro, their center, 6'3", 280, uh, junior, Richard Jr. They will give him time to throw. He's a stand-up quarterback in George Martin. Nice pass that time to Westry, who they use as an outside receiver, caught a spot. Again, they use short range area, third down, and very short for Robert Morris. So third and one for the Colonials. a and going 10 in the box. The handoff. That one went to Jordan Johnson, and it will be good for a first down. This Robert Morris team converted on 8 of 25 
third down conversions. Now remember, they've only played two games. They missed the first game of the season against Dayton. They went to Central Michigan, and even though the score was kind of lopsided, there were great moments in that game. They had a nice win over Howard last Saturday up in Pennsylvania. Four wide set for Robert Morris. Martin will go with the little shovel pass, and that one sniffed out by a &T quickly. They want to try to just pick up some yardage. And we've talked about it a lot during this football season. You've got to be able to establish something on first down. Robert Morris wants to stay out of bad situations on third down, even on second down. Toss sweep, picks up about three, makes second down a little bit manageable. Makes the play call a lot easier for their offensive coordinator, you know, Gabe Lavara. Robert Morris going single wide set. It's second and eight. Martin rolls out, throws towards the side, and that one is brought in by Hicks. It'll be good for a first down, and DeAndre Hicks continues his stellar start to the season. He's a really solid possession receiver, just got some speed. Had the two big touchdowns against Howard a week ago, won a 43-yarder just near the end of the ball game, was a game winner. He can run good routes, and again, what you find out about this Robert Morris team, they do a lot of things off beat, they get you from side to side, they will stretch the field, but they primarily want to run the football. Jack Odekoven is the Colonial out wide. The counter to Jackson, and he's able to turn the corner and get past the line of scrimmage for a couple. Great pursuit that time by A&T. And again, it's going to be a chess match, I think, all afternoon long between you know Courtney Cord and, and uh, Gabe Lavero. Which one can control the line of scrimmage, and what play can you get the other off time? Again, if if, if George Mason, excuse me, George Mason, if Robert Morris is 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 in trouble then they're not going to be able to make effective passing game. That's one thing they can do, the short distance passing. Thinking about basketball with George Mason, you know, <laughs> you kidding me? Bernard Clark was expecting a physical game. He made his guys practice in full pads all week. The handoff to Jackson spins out across the 40, reaches for the 35, and they'll say his knee was down at the 36. It will be shy of the first down marker by a couple. It brings up third and two. Yeah, but you like this now. You're, if you're deemed, you've got a third down, you can do almost anything you want, and you're in positive territory. But really like Elijah Jackson. Goes about 5'9", 170. Very, very similar to Baker in his style. Gets behind his pads, can go inside and bounce to the outside. Carried the ball 26 times. They want to get him in plus gains. Brings up a crucial third down for the Colonials. Picked to finish eighth in the Big South. The handoff goes to Johnson, and he will get stuffed at the line of scrimmage. We talked about it, the urban in this game, and A&T had versatility in their running backs. This Robert Morris football team also has versatility. We've seen Jackson. We saw Wynn a moment ago. Amir Jordan is a young guy that can make some plays. They've also got Jenkins, who's an outstanding young running back. I love this decision. Keep, keep things moving. This will be the first attempt for the Colonials this season to go for it on fourth down. Four wide set. Martin works from the gun. Pressure's on. Pump fake. Spins out of trouble. He'll try and set his feet. He does. Throws. That one will not get brought in. And a and defense comes up with the stop. As Dylan Smith, the tight end, had his hands on it but could not complete the catch. A great job by a and of continuing pressure, keeping Martin, who likes to be a pocket passer and stay inside, not let him get comfortable, gets the ball incomplete. Aggies hold on defense. 3 0 AT over Robert Morris. We're back after this on ESPN3. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> <laughs> Bear Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> Introducing Bear Dynasty.
Back with you here at Truist Stadium, North Carolina A&T with a big fourth down stop. And the Aggies lead Robert Morris 3-0, so Jalen Fowler will come back out on the field. So both teams with some big stops here on defense in the early going. Jamain Martin, he'll take the handoff, pushes off the first tackle, and then is planted right where he started. Jermaine Martin finding this very, very difficult to run in between the tackles against this RMU team. Chigog, Wazano, and, and Cloyd, 23. A really good set of young, quick linebackers that fill holes. Brings up second and 10 for the Aggies. Fowler working with twins left and right. Drops back, looks, throws towards the sideline. He's got Banks, who's able to get a foot in before he's shoved out of bounds. Nice pass that time by Fowler, under control. Little three-step drop, little out route. And Banks, who, like you said earlier, has had a really solid season so far in this ball game. He did, needed eight, got him nine, first down. And A&T trying to work quickly. Instead, Robert Morris will burn a timeout. Robert Morris, Morris they're first. They're going to look at this, and it's going to be about a yard short, actually. So, as it stands, it's third and one. Robert Morris calls a timeout as North Carolina A&T rushed up to the line and went no huddle. Stand so far, Corey Banks, the only A&T receiver with a reception. He's got three of them for 25 well, yards. Well, it's, it's a control passing game. And a and trying to go a little tempo that time. And Robert Morris knowing how huge this could be for them to stop a and on three plays and get the football back. You know, making sure everybody's in, you know, in the place that they need to be. But, again, got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line and the Jalen Fowler under control, makes a nice, easy pass. You want to get banks. If you, if you want to get to the sticks, it's a little short. So this is going to be a third and very manageable. Jamain Martin. It is the single back. Fowler under center. You don't see that too often. Wachuku in motion. The handoff to Martin. And he easily gets the first down and leaps to midfield. You kind of get a theme today that we feel like Martin, a and uh, his ankle is better. And we're going to run him, and we're going to run him, and they're going to run him some more. And that's what you should do. Jermaine Martin last year, 187 carries. 23 touchdowns and nearly 1,500 yards, and they would love now in conference play to get him rolling. Back in 2019, John Maine Martin was first in FCS football, 7.76 yards per carry. First and 10 from midfield. Fowler looking, pressure's on. He'll scamper from the pocket, tucks it, runs it. He's to the 40, the 35, and is brought down at the 32. It'll be good for an Aggie first down. Made something out of nothing. And Fowler recognizing he's under pressure, nowhere to throw, goes out the backside for a huge Aggie gain, and that's the type of decisions that you like to have your young quarterback. This is only Fowler's third start, so showing his ability to make good decisions, not force anything, you like to see him beat him with the legs. Fowler sends Quenzel Lockhart in motion. The handoff to Baker, changes direction, ducks under a tackle, spins out of another, and he will be brought down after a gain of a few. There was not a lot of room out there. Well, great pursuit early on the play by Robert Morris. You saw a handful of white shirts there trying to stop him, turn him inside. And then again, what you love about Baker is his ability to, to stop, have great balance, and then able to pick up speed again. And took really what should have been about a three or four yard loss and picked up a few yards out of that. Bernard Clark kept saying, you know, this is the school that produced Tariq Cohen. I have to keep reminding my guys that, and he's seeing why. Fowler tucks it, runs it, has plenty of daylight, and is brought down inside the red zone. And, and what you're seeing is, is 
great maturity out of your young quarterback in Fowler. All eyes, if they've been all season long, have been on the backs for North Carolina and T. Baker last week, Martin the previous games, and you've seen why. Now when they're stacking the box, you make the fake the inside. The, open, the middle is open. He's able to run, carry, and pick up another yard for a first down. A&T 7 of 10 in the red zone this year. Machuku the motion man. Play action. The throw over the middle. And that one slips in and out of Banks' hands. Had plenty of room to work. Fowler just threw it a little bit behind him. A play fake pulls everybody up. And so you've got one-on-one. -on -one, and that's just a nice little skinny post. And, and I know Fowler and Banks will talk about that in the film session on Monday because that was, should have been possibly six. Just got through the hands. Second and 10 for a and The handoff. Here's Tootin. Bounces in and makes the deposit in the end zone. Touchdown, a &T. Bashal Tootin, the freshman, his second score of the season. Block at the point of attack. Bounce inside, get to the outside. Needs one little block from the perimeter, gets it. Good job by Banks. And then you see a young player that's got a great upside and toot and run and get into the happy zone. Andrew Brown on for the extra point. And he will split the uprights. So North Carolina A&T leads it 10 0 with 107 remaining here in the first quarter. North Carolina A&T showing some depth at the running back position. You saw Martin, Baker, and Tootin all in on that one. It was an eight play, 64 yard drive over the last 341. But Stan, you, you continue to see Coach Washington work in those running backs. RBU is what they call themselves. Well, Robert Morris did a really nice job of defending it, but again, just too athletic, bouncing to the inside, then to the out, and then all of a sudden, bam, you're gone. And when, you, when you're worrying about a steady diet of somebody going in between the tackles that's got the speed to bounce out like you have with Martin, then you've got a guy like Baker, which everything, everything is ending in touchdown, as he thinks. And then you come in there with Tootin, who's young, Still learning how to, to play the position, but it's got the athleticism to make plays. It makes it for a long possible afternoon. Jonathan Wynn will field this one at the nine. Spins out of trouble, crosses the 20, and is dropped at the 24. Okay, now, now if you're Robert Morris, you've, you've had a modicum of success on your first drive, not able to capitalize on the on the short yardage situation, a now scores. So you've got to be able to now get some kind of offensive rhythm. And again, they want to establish the ground game. I just don't know how much success that they can have if first down is a two or one or less than that play. They've, they've got to be able to throw the football, which they can do. But right now, I think if you touch Coach Clark, he says, look, we're going to do what we do. We're tough. We're going to pound it inside, and we're going to try to make our own plays. Since Sam Washington arrived here in Aggieland back in 2011, the Aggie defense has held opponents under 80 yards rushing in 50 out of 108 games. And so nice you call. are 100% correct, Stan. They have to find a way to yeah, throw the yeah, ball. Yeah, and nice call on first down. They just try to go inside out. Receivers there. And again, they've had a couple of passes early this afternoon that they've just not been able to, to connect with. Second and 10 for Robert Morris from its own 24. The run up the middle. And Jackson is bottled up after a gain 
of about five. Eliza Jackson steadily moving up to Robert Morris. Record books as far as rushing. Came into this game with 1,800 yards, a little bit more. Again, he's got the speed to get to the outside. And, and you'll see different ways they try to get him to football. Similar to what you're going to see all season out of Baker. And then another third down situation for RMU. Robert Morris, one for two today on third down. Some movement along the line of scrimmage, and that will put some laundry out on the field. Offside. Offside. Defense. Defense. Moving it to the neutral zone. And that one. Five-yard Five penalty. penalty. Third down. Third down. That one will keep it at third down, but it will now be third and one. So a much different play call coming in this scenario. And that is the end of the first quarter. North Carolina A&T leads Robert Morris 10-0. We're back after these messages on ESPN3. Football season by four participating items and save fifty dollars off fanatics gear at wearetailgatenation.com. Do is charge for anything that may happen on game day. So grab yourself an ice cold Mountain Dew, cheer your team on, and enjoy the game. We know our fans are the best fans. Do the do. North Carolina A and T leads it ten nothing here at Truist Stadium in Greensboro. The first ever Big South football game to be played in the Gate City. And so far, Jamain Martin looks to be his old self. Well, he got the ball to him early, got in some rhythm, and I think that's one of the things you have to do with a running back or with a quarterback is get him in some rhythm. And because of the success Martin was able to have early, then Fowler was able to pick up a few yards on some gains and keep drives alive and eventually get the touchdown to Tootin. So a very impressive second drive by the Aggies. Gets them on the board. Now if you're Robert Morris, pick up this short yard situation. Keep your drive going. Continue to gain confidence in this ball game. And now a third and one. Pivotal moment early in this game. The end around. Big hit near the stick, but it looks like a first down for DeAndre Hicks. Yeah, again, they, they had a lot of success with this last week against Howard. A little short pass, a little flip to toss, a jet sweep action to try to get Hicks in open space. Remember, a speedster, the kid transferred from McNeese State and has the ability to make plays. He needed a yard, got exactly what he needed, he keeps his drive going. Good toss, gets outside, gets a lead block. Picked up about three, but again, the most important thing for Robert Morris, they're running the ball, having a little success, but they're keeping games going. Jackson follows his blockers. He's to the 45 and rolls out of bounds. Good for another Robert Morris first down. Great job at the point of attack. You see Barron, number 69 there, the right guard, but Dylan Young, 74, Trevor Hicks, 61, do a great job in paving the way. And again, getting the ball to Hicks in open space, the main goal for this Robert Morris football team. You saw starting corner Amir McNeil's helmet come off. He has to sit this play. I'm sure one of the coaches for Robert Morris up in the box noticed that. Hicks is the slot man near the Robert Morris bench. Martin drops back, looking, throws over the middle. That pass is complete. 
And Najee Reams with the stop immediately as Hicks able to bring it in for a gain of two. Short crossing routes that usually are going to be able to pick up a couple extra yards are not going to happen much against the A&T linebacker core and defensive back. And Najee Reams, who's having a really super season so far, nine tackles against Duke and, and eight against Furman, can close very, very well. He's got the speed, makes a play. You're not going to outrun him too many times. A member of the 2017 NCAA 4x400 outdoor track and field qualifying team. Martin. Play action, heaves it up, down the seam, contact, and that one will be waved incomplete. That one not catchable. And it'll bring up third down. And it looked like they had the receiver open. There was some contact, and apparently officials felt that the contact was either incidental or not able to catch it. So now, this, this is the worst nightmare. You know, if you're, if you're Coach Clark and, and staff, the third down and over five, six yards, how do you get the first down, keep the drive going? North Carolina A&T has elected to use its second timeout. We'll take it with them. 10-0 Aggies. You're watching Big South Football on ESPN3. Television. Television. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hypnotized by it. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gaping at the screen. That nauseating, foul, repulsive screen. Television. Television. They wonder what they've ever seen. In that ridiculous machine. Arby's. Two for six bucks. Every day. Oh, it's got ranch on it. Oh, it's got ranch on it. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's. We have the meat. A big catch on third and eight for Chris Charles. For Robert Morris and the Colonials are into Aggie territory through the air. Nice third down call. Deep crossing route. Chris Charles is another one of those receivers for this Robert Morris team that can make some plays. Goes about 6'3". Plenty of time. Good protection. Throws it over the top. That's a nice pass and catch. So first and 10 for Robert Morris. The handoff to Jackson. And nowhere to go. Najee Reams. In there for the stop. Well, Najee Reams has been all over the football, had a big hit a moment ago, got a deflection, comes in from his corner spot, free safety area, and, and makes yet another tackle. And if you're Robert Morris right now, you just got to be very, very patient. Don't let A&T defensively speed you up. Second and nine for Robert Morris from the 30-yard line. Fakes the shovel pass, and he's wrapped up and sent down to the field by Jermaine McDaniel. His second sack of the season. You gotta love Jermaine McDaniel. He's missed a couple of ball games, preseason, all conference performer. Very, very active on the outside. And again, one of the things that you've gotta be able to do is rush the quarterback. One of the very, very best in the conference is Jermaine McDaniel. Brings up third and long. Martin looking, throws behind his receiver and it's almost picked off. Richie Kittles almost had that one and the Aggies come up with a big third down stop. Wow, how big was the McDaniel sack? And you think about this Robert Morris team, it's only their second sack they've given up this season. Again, they played some pretty good competition. But again, just J McDaniels has the ability to change a football game. And you felt like Robert Morris was in drive, drone the score. Now they're having to punt the football. And now the question is, can the defense hold up? Souders gets rid of it. Banks will wave for the fair catch. Contact made. And that will put a flag on the field. And I'm wondering if they're going to call kick-catch interference on this play. 
That's exactly what it looks like they're going to call, and that was just lack of situational Kick awareness. Kicking team, number nine, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. DeMonte Martin. Timeout. Is flagged as we take a timeout. a t will take over, leading 10-0 after these messages. When cancer hits, know your options. At the time, they told me that I had prostate cancer. I was given only three options of treatment. Prostatectomy, cryotherapy, standard radiation. I said, you've left one out. He said, what's that? I said, proton therapy. Proton therapy eases human misery and saves lives. There was no side effects, none. Ask your oncologist about proton therapy. Live your life. Let us fight your cancer. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Big things are happening this year across the South, from the mountains to the coast. The fast are getting faster. The strong are getting stronger. And the best is getting better. Get ready to raise your expectations. Get ready for something big. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Big South Football. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. First and 10 for North Carolina A&T as the Aggies lead it 10 nothing. Baker, the single back. Fowler rolls out, throws to the sideline. That one is complete. To Elijah Bowick. And that'll be good for another first down. Bowick, you may remember, got his first reception. It was a huge one last week in their win over North Carolina Central. Another one of these young, outstanding receivers that uh, anti fans are excited about. This is the kid, one of about four guys on this Aggie team that transferred from Virginia Tech. Baker takes that one up the middle, spins out of trouble, and he's down at the 45. And you start to get the feeling that the Aggie offensive line is beginning to wear down this Robert Morris team. We told you this front line goes about about 305 pounds. Conversely, the defensive front for Robert Morris goes about 270 pounds. Quick, but not heavy. Right back to Baker. Good push along the front, and he will be stopped just shy of midfield. Aggie's running a little bit more tempo, and you can do that when, one, you've got some really good running backs that keep going in and out, and two, when you feel like you're getting some push. You know, it's really hard to run tempo a lot of times because you got to get off the ground. And teams that have a lot of success with those big guys that push you down, and they're able to get up and get reset. And a and doing a good job getting an offensive rhythm right now. a and also able to swap out offensive linemen. You saw Corian Sharp just come off the field for Lawrence Legron. Second and six. Fowler takes it himself. Plenty of room into Robert Moore's territory. The 25, the 20, and spun down. We've seen Jalen Fowler do that a couple of times today. And this was a called quarterback keeper. You could tell because you had those linemen that peeled back to protect. And he reads it. There's no one in the middle of the field because they're so concerned with the right. So watch that. Boom, there's it right up the middle. And gets there and gets enough for the first down and a little bit more. Boom, there's the end of the play again. But again, Jalen Fowler, great recognition, great communication from the box to the field. Jamain Martin, the single back. Machuku in motion. 
Play action, the throw over the middle. That one is complete to Bowick. The freshman having his number called a few times here early. The threat of the run when you've had success running the ball, it makes the passing game so much easier. You can throw when you want to. The play fake, linebackers have got to react to that. Finds a little seam there. Bowick gets in the middle. First and goal for North Carolina a and And this is where having four running backs really helps you. Deep in the red zone. Fowler will move under center. Banks in motion. The handoff to Martin. He'll barrel his way. Wachuku pushing. And forward progress is stopped on the doorstep of the end zone. You just get the feeling, based on some things the coaching staff was saying this week, about a healthy, healthy Jermaine Martin. You can feel like they're going to make sure that he gets his touchdown. And we have an injured Colonial down on the field. We'll take a timeout as the training staff tends to him. 10-0, A&T. We're back after this on ESPN3. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> <laughs> Bear yeah. Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> We're paying for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear, exclusively at the Home Depot. 10-0 North Carolina A&T as the Aggies have second and goal from the two. Let's say Martin. See if they give it to Martin to play fake and Fowler keeps it. And Martin stopped. There is a flag on the field. And Tony Brown and Bozako were thinking the same thing. That it's going to go to Martin. We're going to make the tackle. That's going to be an offside, I think, on Robert Morris. So no wonder they were able to get gang tackle maybe so quick. We'll see. Number 20, half the distance to the goal. Second down. So it will remain second down. It'll move the stick to the one. So it'll be second and goal from the one-yard line for the Aggies. I think that was Dakari Cabell that was just a little bit anxious trying to make the play. But these are no-brainers if you're an Aggie fan. Keep the ball on the ground. The handoff to Martin. And he is stopped. That Robert Morris defensive front clogging up the lanes. Malahi 97. Bryce Fontana. These are guys that, that can make some plays. They take up some space as well, 295 and 270 respectively inside. And they found a way inside to clog it up. And we've talked earlier about those good linebackers that this RMU team has. And they come in and gang tackle Zion, pulling 98 in there too. But again, nothing at the point of attack. Coming from the weak side, takes the legs out. That's Cloyd. And we've got third down and goal. Play action, Fowler looking, throws it up to the back of the end zone, and no! That one will not be held on to for the grab. Had the chance, ball goes outside, and just not able to hold on to it at the very end of the play. Nick Dobson was the receiver on the outside. Let's take a look at this, play fake. Pachuco's wide open for a moment, 46. He go over the top to Dobson, kind of stumbling, not sure had he caught it, it was in bounds. Fans want him to go for it, but you've got a guy in Brown who's been steady. They call him, what do they call him? Money. We'll see if he's money on this one. 
Just a freshman from down the road in Lexington, North Carolina. And that one is through the uprights. So add another three points on the board for North Carolina a &T. And the Aggies lead it 13-0 with 6.16 to go here in Greensboro. We're back after these messages on ESPN3. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where is your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> Bear yeah. Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> We're paying for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear, exclusively the Home Depot. We should be good. Back with you here in Greensboro, 13 0 North Carolina AT. The Aggies with 135 yards on the ground so far on 16 rushes. Brown, who just put one through the uprights for another three points, will go ahead and kick it off. This one picked up by Wynn. Flag on the field as he breaks free along the far side. And now he's finally planted after he crosses the 20, but a flag back at around the eight yard line. Can't stop me by number 48, Steven Davis Jr. So that flag will go against. Yeah, his preliminary Robert signal Morris. was blocked in the back, yep. I think, for, for Robert Morris. And so, you know, they, they came into this ball game having run 100 plays. And we talked about their emphasis on being a run team. 67 of those 100 plays they've run, only 33 passes. a and run 196 going into the day's ball game. And you mentioned 16 rushes. That's right on par with what they want to do, 116 rushes out of 196 plays. So right now, you've got, you've got one team doing exactly what they want to do in a and Another team has had a modicum of success, but not a lot of success, especially in field position for Robert Morris. RMU, 11 of its plays have been for rushes, 19 total plays. This was number 20. As Martin able to throw this one towards the seam, and it is picked up by Brown. A nice call on first down, deep in your own back of the end zone. And just a little quick step drop, a little rhythm pass, and you get the ball to Brown. And Brown, another one of the steady-handed receivers for this Colonial football team. That gives you a little breathing space. And then again, you can start to grind if you need to. You're only down 13 nothing, So it would be huge if RMU could get on the scoreboard. A nice little, you know, Five and a half minute drive, get you some points, go into halftime, start this thing all over again. Second and two, the handoff to Jackson. Can't turn the corner. a and defense shut the door. Jackson. Well, you, we talked about it earlier, but always worth noting, you know, that last four ball games of last season, last three, and in the other games here, they've held opponents to less than 100 yards. You know, you know, seven times a season ago, one time already this year, uh, Central with only 52 yards rushing. It is very, very difficult to run against a and defense. Third. Around here, everybody calls them blue death defense. When they're good, they're blue death. Third and four for Robert Morris. Martin, quick drop, throws the pass complete to Brown. That'll be good for a first down as he's sent to the grass at the 22. Love the poise of George Martin, your quarterback for RMU. Stands in the pocket strong. Told you, he's a guy that is a very, very good drop back passer. And just a quick three step drop, bam, finds a slant route. And Brown, another successful play. Again, good protection again by RMU. Steps up, rears back, knows exactly where he's going. You've got coverage to the outside. He goes on the inside route. Boom, first down. 
pretty good quarterback lineage that George Martin followed in high school. Joe Montana, he was pretty good. Same yeah, high school. A long time ago, you know. <laughs> Here's Martin dropping back on first and ten. Forced to run, lofts it over to Jackson, makes the grab on the run, and he's twirled down at around the 41. And Martin using the feet to make something happen, and Jackson staying aware of the situation. And just get the ball out. You know there's going to be pressure, and Martin has done a nice job. Just, okay, hey, I got I to gotta make a play, and, and he does that. And it's not going to force it. Came in. Uh, to this game, having you know, 16 to 29 and a couple of touchdowns, and remember, over 2,000 yards in his career. He's a steady arm, a smart guy, and, and makes some good decisions. Won't hurt you. First and 10, play action. The throw over the middle, and Brown can't haul that one in as McNeil there on the coverage. And that's good coverage on McNeil. It's kind of shadowed the receiver. When he made his in route, he made his break on the football. Amir McNeil, going to have a hard time running away from him. Runs a 4.38 40-yard dash. Brings up second and 10. Charles, the motion man, the counter, the handoff to win, and he's able to plow ahead for a couple. You have to understand time and score right now, even like, like you would do in a hoops ball game. You have three minutes on a moving clock, third down and about seven or eight yards ago. You know, what do you call here? Uh, do you make this, you know, a four down play, four down situation? You know, still plenty of time, but I think if you're RMU, you got to find a way to keep staying aggressive. I like what they've done so far. RMU does get the ball back to start the second half. Two by two formation. Some movement along the line of scrimmage. The flag is out, the throw to the sideline, and that one long on the free play. March pass is overthrown, however, flag on the play. Offside, defense, number 56, five-yard penalty, third down. So that'll make it a third and two now. The flag was on Elijah Brown. A lot easier to make a call in the middle of the field from third and two than it would be third and seven. And this is the second time today that we've seen this. A third and long becomes a third and short because of an Aggie penalty. And the last time they had that situation, tried to throw, and you had a big sack by McDaniel. Four wide, so you think you're going to be in some man coverage. Keep your eye on Hicks. Martin finds Hicks into Aggie territory, and that will be a Robert Morris first down. And one of the ways to kind of handle a pass rush is to get rid of the football. Bam, 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 get rid of it. And Martin has done a really good job of recognizing coverage. That was Hicks in motion. Boom, hit him on stride. You needed, you needed uh, two, he got four, first down. Jackson is the deep back. Charles, the receiver at the bottom of your screen. The handoff to Jackson. And he is ahead for two yards. Inside of two minutes to go. If you're Robert Morris, you do not want to rush right now. Minute 35 on the clock. So it's second and nine for the Colonials. Martin drops back, pressure on, throws, and that one, is it brought in by Charles? And it is! Great catch by Chris Charles. Throw the ball low, away, no one can get it but the receiver, and another great pass by George Martin. And now we have a whistle, and we are going to have a review. It was a low pass, but Charles had some room to Look, operate. I, I thought 
and this is just because of our angle, his back was to us, but he looked like he was underneath and cradled. We maybe get a better look right here. Good, good job by the offensive line. Goes under. Can't tell from that angle. And the way that dirt kicked up just a little bit, if you see that one more time, it could have been that it was an elbow. That, but I, I, you know what? I was I was one for one last week in making picks, and I'm going to stay out of this one today. I'm just going to be neutral, and that way I won't be right or wrong. That's Did you buy a lot of ticket after nah, the game? I don't, no, I got that. <laughs> I got, yeah, can't get that done. But let's see if we can take one more look here. Again, keep your eyes at the bottom of the screen, number 81. And you know, I, I think it's a catch. It's going to be awfully yeah. tough to I, overturn I th that. I think it's a catch. From, from that angle, I, I'm going to say catch. And if it's wrong, then I was wrong. <laughs> but very impressive drive by RMU right now. By how, how good would it be for them to be able to get on the scoreboard before halftime? And as you mentioned a moment ago, to get the ball back to begin the second half. Chris Charles, two catches, 37 yards so far. And it's going to be a first and 10 from the 30 for Robert Morris. A&T has given up about 165 yards on average in the air. And if there might be a weakness or a way to attack this Aggie team, that might be it, the short passing game. And then eventually, when they're so good in coverage, they don't give up a lot of yards, but they've been successful with Robert Morris so far. And this time, Martin's pass to Chris Charles is short. Martin's pass incomplete. Second down and 10. <laughs> 59 seconds ago, and just, again, if you're RMU, you want to bleed this entire clock. Second and 10 for the Colonials. Trying to find their way to the end zone before halftime. Martin dropping back. The screen pass works to Jackson. He's at the 15, the 10, spins, and is inside the 10 yard line. Robert Morris in position to put one in before half. George Martin's calling and his staff are calling a great football game. Single, single high safety. Now, high safety was deep, and you just recognize it. Send somebody underneath, and you get the back out of the backfield for Jackson. And again, just continuing to roll. Martin, the loft pass to the side. Charles can't bring it in with one hand. Was looking for the flag and won't get it. Nice coverage that time by Miles Simon. Little, little pushing and shoving on both ends of that play, but again, Simon does a great job. But again, you really, you're, you're kind of surprised if you've watched A&T with the pressure they have. You had the McDaniel one sack. They've not really gotten to the quarterback. Give a lot of credit to the offensive line we talked about a moment ago for uh, Robert Morris. Second down and goal to goal. Brings up second and goal. Ball spotted at the eight. Martin goes to the air. And that one through the hands of Hicks. A similar route to try to run somebody underneath to move coverage and get move that safety. And just a little too much air underneath that time by Martin. Could have been six. Brings up third and goal. And here come the towels from all the Aggie fans. Mark drops back, looks, throws to the corner of the end zone, and that one is caught by Hicks for the score. His helmet pops off, he holds on to the ball. Been working that route, a little fade corner a couple of times unsuccessfully. This time, keep your eye on 22. Good block there. Floater goes in the air and touchdown by Robert Morris. So, Nick Basiglia, the grad student, on for the extra point. Souders to hold. 
Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. Robert Morris cuts into the A&T lead. It's 13 to seven, and RMU gets the ball back after the half. It's a perfectly thrown football that gets you six points, and what a very impressive drive by Hicks. That Robert Morris drive, 14 plays, 96 yards in five minutes and 43 seconds. And that's what having a redshirt senior quarterback can do for the head coach, Bernard Clark. It was their second touchdown drive this season between 11 and 15 plays for RMU and couldn't have been more impressive, mixing up the run in the pass and taking what A&T is giving. Remember we said a moment ago, had a high single high safety. So what do you do? You beat that. You got man across the board. You go down the middle and you find a receiver open. He makes a good play, picks up yardage, and then they've got one-on-one -on -one to the outside, throw a nice little floater, can't get it, but Hicks comes in with the catch. And we got ourselves a ball game, folks. Bernard Clark told us this week, Robert Morris is used to having to come from behind in every win except for the Duquesne game in 2019 since he's been the head coach. RMU has had to work from behind in order to win the ball game. This kickoff short. It'll take a one hop and is picked up. Along that far side, it's Cook, and he's still operating down the sideline and steps out in Robert Moore's territory. So with 14 seconds ago, you got, you've got a little time, two plays. Remember, you've got Andrew Brown, who was kicking with more confidence than anybody I've seen as a freshman this early in their career, and he's got a long of 45, went three for three last week. So, again, you just need about maybe, from where's this ball going to be at midfield, you need about 15, maybe 20 yards, and you're definitely in his range. A good, good return, bounce inside. Poor job of covering by RMU, and you just try to get as much as you can. You put yourself in positive territory. So a and with a chance here. And 14 seconds to go. It's first and 10 from the 45. Fowler drops back, throws over the middle. That pass is complete to Jamison Warren, the freshman. So that'll stop the clock. And, and Spencer, what did we talk about at the beginning of this ball game? That, that for Robert Morris, they had to stay out of bad situations. You know, you, you, you're about 20 seconds away from halftime. You give them a big play on a kick return. And then one play later, a and is practically in your own field goal range, and you get Warren there, that young tight end, just goes over the middle, find the empty spots in the defense, and make something happen. So you're definitely within Andrew Brown's range. And with eight seconds to go, you got to think one play and then kick, if not one play deep and then a play. We'll, we'll see. But a has got plenty of time, and they know they can get on the board, or they feel comfortable about it. And options, which as a coach, Stan, as well, you know, that, that's what you want. You it, want it, options. At this point in time, it's, it's a great, it's, it's a big option. And you kick the field goal, maybe you try to go deep and see if you can score. And it's so deflating if you're RMU. You feel like you're back in the ball game. Let's get to the half. We get the ball back. We can get some momentum. And now you, you, you're trying to hold on and make sure the Aggies don't score one more time. So it's first and 10 for a and from the RMU 22. Fowler working from the gun. Drops back. Throws along the side. Leslie brings it in for the score. Didn't we just see this last Saturday? Same situation. Plenty of time for Fowler. Drops back deep. Zach Leslie, haven't talked about him a lot this year, but climbs the ladder and gets the touchdown with three seconds remaining for a and Zach Leslie back in the lineup after a lower body injury, held him out for a couple of games. A big time playmaker for Sam Washington as Brown able to split the uprights and makes it 20 to seven. North Carolina a and on top right before the half. Three, 
So Tamon Cook's long return sets up the Zach Leslie touchdown. And it's amazing how quickly momentum can change in a football game. If you're Robert Morris about a minute ago, you were feeling good about life, you thought, okay, you know, we're gonna be down a score, we're, we've done good. Now, you get hit in the mouth one time and then bam, a t wastes very little time, gets on the board. Two plays, 45 yards in 11 seconds, and they did it through the air. That is not characteristic of an a t ball club operating but via you had, the pass. Yeah, but you had great field position, and so you, you're going to be able to get some areas. They're protecting the side, sideline, so you go right down the middle. You get a nice pass to Warren. You follow that up with the pass to Leslie, and, and you know, the second time this year when they've scored touchdowns in less than five plays, and you feel real good about yourself on offense right now. You've been able to run the ball. You've been able to, to, to pass the ball, and your special teams, once again, steps up with a big play. Squib kick from Brown. This one fielded by the up back. It's not clean, it's still loose. And the pile, as time expires here in the first half. But A&T preventing a potential return as the Aggies will head to the locker room on top of Robert Morris, 20 to seven. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back to recap the first half right here on ESPN3. Television. Television. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hypnotized by it. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gaping at the screen. That nauseating, foul, repulsive screen. Television. Television. No wonder what they ever seen. In that ridiculous machine. <laughs> This football season, buy four participating items and save fifty dollars off Fanatics gear at WeAreTailgateNation.com.
Robert Morris a lot of credit. They converted a lot of third down situations. In fact, they're six out of eight in the ball game. This was that drive that culminated in the touchdown pass uh, a minute ago with uh, with Hicks. A and T has done a really nice job, Spence, of just being able to run the ball when need be. But this is the backbreaker or get you in position again. This was the drive a moment ago with Hicks. And we're moving around a little bit. So you get plays, and you're going back inside, back outside. And that was a nice touchdown that we saw by the young kid, you know, tooting. I, I really like the poise that you're seeing today out of your quarterback, Martin. He's been able to find his receivers. Offensive line's done a really nice job of protecting the quarterback. You see it here, plenty of time. Floats it into the corner. That's a very nice catch by DeAndre Hicks. Hicks has done a really good job in the game. Four receptions for 24 yards and a touchdown. And then a &T strikes back very quickly on the drive. This is another perfect pass, just like what we saw last Saturday, Aggie fans, when you scored just before the half. This time, Zach Leslie, who's been out for a couple of games with an injury, gets a 22-yard pass, and that gets us to the 20-7 halftime lead. It's time now for the First Citizens Bank Forever First Halftime Statistics. And you mentioned it, Stan. Jalen Fowler having himself quite the ball game, throwing and running. So far, through the air, Fowler 7 of 11 for 99 yards and one touchdown. He has yet to be sacked. He's also run the ball three times and gained 59 yards with a long of 31. Elsewhere on the stat sheet, Jermaine Martin, seven carries, 39 yards. Kashawn Baker, five for 21. And Bashal Tutin, one touch, 18 yards into the end zone. For Robert Morris, George Martin is 11 of 19 through the air for 134 yards and one touchdown. He has been sacked one time. Elijah Jackson, eight carries, 26 yards, and a long of 12. Johnson, three for three yards. And then through the air receiving, Jackson, two catches, 42 yards. Chris Charles, who we've called his name a couple of times, two grabs for 37 yards, and DeAndre Hicks continues up his stellar play. He has four catches for 24 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, you know, funny thing when you look at these stats, you know, we mentioned just a moment ago the highlights, six out of eight third down conversions, something that Robert Morris was very concerned about being able to keep the football 16 minutes and 40 seconds of time of possession for them. a and 13 minutes and 20 seconds. Aggies only converted two out of four on third down. But you look at what the success has been of Fowler. Fowler came into this ball game only having rushed for 52 yards total. He take the sacks out and everything. He's got 59 in this ball game so far, only on three carries, but recognizing what the defense was giving him made some plays. Now if you're RMU, you come back, you, 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 you thought you were back in this ball game, and you still are, but now you've got to settle in the explosion play, remember what we said, the bad situations, now they've got to play themselves out. Should be an interesting second half, Colonials and Aggies. Win back deep, he'll misjudge it, and the ball will roll into the end zone for a touchback as Andrew Brown, the freshman, with his fourth touchback of the season. So that'll bring on the Robert Morris offense led by George Martin. So far, the Colonials with 10 first downs, 14 rushes for 20 yards. And there is head coach Bernard Clark, who has had success in this building, as we mentioned earlier, the former Hampton defensive coordinator. He's 2-0 against North Carolina A&T. Had a lot of success, played at Miami, won a couple of national championships, played in the NFL for a short period of time, Cincinnati Bengals, among other teams. So he understands football, like you said, was an assistant coach at Hampton under two stints, one of which with Joe Taylor. Both head coaches in this ballgame, former NFL players. Uh, Jackson is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by that defensive front of North Carolina A&T. Daniel Henry, the freshman in there. This, this is one of the guys that everybody's real excited about is Daniel Henry. Is and There's an Aggie down on the field. But his ability to make some plays was phenomenal against Duke a couple of weeks ago with six tackles, can get off the football, moves very, very well. A kid from not far from here in Creedmoor played South Granville High School. Richie Kittles is the Aggie down, the seventh-year grad student. The 2018 Celebration Bowl defensive MVP. 
You're talking about a guy that has had a lot of success. You know, when I think about Richie Kittles, I think about a guy that can hit, <laughs> can make plays, can hit you. We're going to step away. We're back after these messages on ESPN3. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Big things are happening this year across the South, from the mountains to the coast. The fast are getting faster. The strong are getting stronger. And the best is getting better. Get ready to raise your expectations. Get ready for something big. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Big South Football. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we try and educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Martin with the long pass along the sideline. That one brought in by Jack Odakoven for a first down on second and 14. Well, back shoulder fade, and again, they know that the wide receivers are being locked in man, and that time just the back shoulder. And Odakoven does a great job coming back to the ball and, and getting RMU out of some deep territory. I've really been impressed with the, and I keep talking about it because I think it's worth noting, the offensive line of RMU has done a really good job in giving Martin time to throw. First and 10 from the 48. The handoff, Jackson cuts it up across midfield and is into Aggie territory. Every time it seems like Robert Morris is backed up against the wall, George Martin finds a way to distribute that football and get them out of a bad well, That situation. was a nice throw. I mean, to get Odakovich, but again, this time Jackson's able to pick up some positive yards on first down, and now you're in positive territory if you're IMU. So your play call, you know, you, you got a lot of things you can do when you sit yourself up and now second down at about six. Keep the ball in Jackson's hands in various ways, and don't forget about your wide receivers, Brown and Hicks. Play action, Martin rolling out. The screen pass dropped off, and a big hit applied on the end of that one by William Jones. And Cupicello is another one of these young guys that's just had limited time. This is his first catch of the year. You just try to drop him over the top. Again, pressure by the Aggies. And other than that one McDaniel sack, really haven't gotten to the quarterback. RMU six out of eight on third down in the first half of this game. Third and five. Martin, two-step drop, throws over the middle. That one complete. And a giant hit applied by Najee Reams, but it'll be good for a first down. Jackson. You know, when we talk to the coaching staff, one thing that they say is we're tough. You know, we're not as big in some places, but we've got a lot of tough guys. And James Westry going over the middle knows he's going to get hit. He doesn't worry about it. A nice strike by Martin and the moving of the chains by the Colonials. And the Newark, New Jersey native able to hold on after the big pop. So first and 10 for Robert Morris. Hand off to Jackson, nowhere to go. He's dropped at the 40. Jackson. It'll be a loss 
of three. The explosive. Just train love. Now, how many times a day have we called the names of Love, Branch, Wallace, McDaniel, Daniel? You know, this A&T defense, one of the great strengths of their defensive front is that they have six, seven, eight guys that they can rotate in. They keep them fresh. They keep them aggressive. They won't play. They're never going to impress you with one guy that's going to make 100 tackles in a season. But you're going to get a lot of guys that are making 65, 70, Stucky, Roberts, Fumba from last year along with Howard and those guys. Second and 13. The handoff to win. Cuts it up. Plenty of room to operate. Across the 20, the 10, and into the end zone with the reach. Touchdown, RMU. Jonathan Wynn with that second burst of speed. Watch the block at the point of attack. Bam, boot block on the outside by Reamley, and this is just speed. You talked about it in the open. Everybody's got a hat on the hat, and a great job by Jonathan Wynn, stretching end zone easy. A very impressive, a huge job by Robert Morris to get in the end zone. What an impressive drive. And the Colonials right back in this one. It'll be Basiglia on for the extra point. And this one is good. And Robert Morris down by six, but back in this one. North Carolina, A&T Aggies, 20. Robert Morris. We're going to go ahead and take a timeout. We're back after these messages on ESPN3. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> <laughs> Bear Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> We're paying for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear, exclusively the Home Depot. A seven-play, 75-yard drive ends in a Jonathan Wynn 40-yard touchdown run as this kick through the back of the end zone for the touchback. Well, <laughs> there you go. You know, we said you've got to do all the little things in bad situations. RMU played themselves out of a bad session with a very impressive seven-play drive. And wow, the speed that you see. We talked about those backs. They had some speed, deceptively fast. Now how does a and answer? Well, we saw at the end of the first half, a response was needed, and it was a 45-yard drive on two plays in yes. 11 seconds. And that was the response that was needed by RMU. And now they're kicking themselves to think, wow, if we hadn't had the mistakes on the kickoff, what could we? What kind of game would it be now? First and ten for A and T. Martin takes the handoff, tries to bounce it outside, cuts up. He's at the thirty-five and is shoved out of bounds at around the thirty-six. It'll be good for a first down. And see, that's the dilemma that Martin has. His power at two hundred twenty pounds. He. He's thinking, do I just run over the guy or do I try to outrun him and make a move? And even though that's about a 12, 13 yard pickup, watch this. This is really, make a decision how you want to hit him. Boom, there's a juke, there's a boop. And then he just, you never get a clean look at him. But the ability to either run over you or run by you, that's what Jermaine Martin has. Warren is the slot man as Martin takes the handoff and is brought down in the open field. 
And there's a big tackle by Chicago. And, and again, the linebacking core has stood the test of time in this football game for Robert Morris. And Chicago's a kid that uh, you know, came in with a sack, had 24 tackles on the afternoon, had a huge game. They were really undermanned against Central Michigan a couple of weeks ago. Went to the game without 29 of their players, and they had first-year guys that had never been on a plane or a bus or train that were going up to Michigan to play. And he had you know, a, a bunch of tackles, 18 in fact just the second game in program history against an FBS opponent. Fowler, the delayed handoff. Baker, through traffic and is taken down at the first down marker. It will be good to move the sticks. One thing that you really don't appreciate enough maybe is the ability of Martin but definitely Baker and Tootin to cut back against the grain, put their foot in the ground, and bam, get by and try to make plays. And that was just an extra effort you saw that time by young Mr. Baker. Baker the deep back in the pistol. Play action, Fowler rolling, throws. This one brought in by Hunt. Just a nice, easy toss and catch Fowler to Hunt. So it's another first down for North Carolina A&T. And isn't it amazing, Spencer, how easy it is for you to run your offense and go through your bag when you're able to establish what you like. You know, you think and run, you think and run, play action really is valuable. You get your receiver a little out route, gets enough for another first down. Sam Washington makes no mistake about it. His squad is a run-to-pass team. We do chicken. We make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Fowler on the run. Breaks free, spins out of traffic, and is hit right around the 33. Jalen Fowler using his entire six foot four, 235 pound frame. You know, Fowler coming in this ball game, we mentioned it at the, at the top of the half with, at 52 yards rushing, which was fourth best on this Aggie football team. And it shows you one that there's really not been that explosion run. We had the 100 yard rush last week, but he's really done a great job of avoiding tacklers and putting his foot down and getting upfield. The handoff and it looks like Tootin was taken down in the backfield and uh, Stan, people might not know what that quote that you just said was. We do chicken. That, that of course, the famous quote <laughs> from former Aggie head coach Rod Broadway, uh, who won a lot of championships here. He just keeps it real, real simple. KFC does chicken. Our Bojangles does chicken. We do chicken. We do football. We block. We tackle. We hit. We make plays. And it's consistency, consistency, and consistency. And that's one of the things that they were talking about this week. They wanted to be consistent. And so far, you've seen a lot of traces of the Aggies doing it. There's Robert Clark there. You know, he's very concerned right now what's going on. Fowler to the air. Finds his man, Cook. And he is dropped just shy of that first down marker. So it'll bring up fourth and less than a yard. you got to think the Aggies are going for this. They are. They're lining up quickly. Got a lot of options. Fowler probably the best. Fowler keeps it himself and does the old Tom Brady, the little push and roll out. Well, he had to because he was stopped. He did a nice job plugging the middle, and he bounced to the outside. And just think about this drive for a &T. We talk about consistency. Three running backs have carried the football plus a quarterback. Two different receivers have been involved in plays. Coming into the game, a &T had eight different guys that they carried the ball and nine different guys that it caught passes. So, again, they are, they are flexing the football today. Fowler. Quick throw, that one batted and intercepted. It's Ricardo Watson, the Florida State transfer, who got up there and got his paws all over it. And intercepted by Zip. This is a guy that, that I inadvertently didn't mention in the first half. He doesn't start, but he gets a lot of minutes. He's an aggressive player that makes some plays. And this is what you can't get there. Jam it, the ball's deflected and caught by Watson and Robert Morris. Stop.
Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where is your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> <laughs> Bear yeah. Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of bear, exclusively the Home Depot. Robert Morris with a chance to take the lead on this drive. Okay, deflection by Watson and then the catch and the play. You want to stop. You want to stop plays and make plays and watch. I want to watch what they were going to do. Just so you know, Robert Morris has been a very, very good team so far in the second half of ball games. They were able to come back against Howard after giving up a touchdown. As there's a colonial player that's, that's injured. Looks like it might be Hicks, number 61. We'll, we'll get a better look. But again, a great defensive stance that time by RMU. And while we have a moment, uh, we'd like to send our best wishes to Associate Athletic Director and Sports Information Director Brian Holloway as he is unable to be here today, recovering at home. And uh, I know that our entire production staff sending our best wishes out to him and uh, always a, a great resource and a good friend uh, to us, Stan. We were talking about it last week about good SIDs and, and Brian is one of the best and also want to thank Jim Duzik the Sports Information Director at Robert Morris for all his help at this week in getting ready for this, this historic first game in the Big South by both of these schools. Even though Robert Morris played a couple of games in the spring, this is official. This, is, this goes in the record books. You were there. And Robert Morris at A&T took the field. So, Brian, get well soon. Brian, don't forget to do something you're supposed to do for me. Don't forget to get that done. <laughs> While you're feeling better, we, we miss you and we love you and we'll, we'll look to see you next week. Don't want to forget that you got something you got to do. <laughs> but, you know, this, this now the momentum just swung a little bit and – Robert Morris not able to get anything off their first down play, and you hope that Hicks is going to be back in the ball game. But they've got to settle in and continue to be effective on offense. Martin through the air on second and ten, and that screen pass really never developed. No, but it was just a little bit off balance. Again, Martin, one of the few times where he was kind of backing away and kind of threw the ball out as opposed to up, and a sure-handed guy in Jackson not able to connect. So, again, Aggies holding on defense. We'll see. Third down. Third and ten for the Colonials. So far today, Robert Moore is seven of nine on third down. Crowd starting to come alive here at Truist Stadium. Ten on the play clock. Martin surveying the field, flush from the pocket, floats it to the side, and that one knocked away by Stuckey. Great play by Stuckey. Martin gets a little too much air on it. It was, a, it was really a version of an RPO. He got all the defenders up, and he's able to throw it, and he just couldn't quite get enough air underneath. And that could have been a big gainer for RMU, but a great play by Stuckey, who once again continues to make the big defensive play for the Aggies. Souders back to punt. Banks set to field at around the 33. Low snap. There is a flag on the field. And this one will drift out of bounds. And we'll wait the, for the call. Now, if this is an offside, it still would not give the Colonials enough for the first down. If there was movement, he almost wonder would the coaching staff, would Coach Washington make them kick it again? Or would you give up what I think is going to be relatively good field position? We'll wait and see. We'll hear what they talk about. And there is no foul on the play. But so that's down. even better. <laughs> I don't want to talk counts. about anything. <laughs> so. We'll play it as it lies. Yep. Oh, I've done that before a few times. <laughs> and, and, but now, great field position. Way to take advantage of a bad situation. Anti-driving, they turn the ball over. 
RMU not able to do anything yet. Some momentum goes back to the Aggies, you know, and the ball's inside the 50 area. First and 10 from the 49. Play action. The throw to the side, it's Bowick. And he is stood up almost immediately. And now, a little late shove by Taven Harvel. Harvel does an excellent job defeating the blocker, staying off the block, and then making the tackle. And again, another one of these guys that, uh, that uh, has played, has got some experience, transferred to RMU from Eastern Michigan, and is just a very, very aggressive corner. So it's second and eight as the Aggies have moved just into Colonial territory. Fowler looking, throwing. That pass is complete to Cook at around the 36, and that will be good for an A&T first down. Tamon Cook did a really good job of getting away from his defender at the beginning of the route and just finds that area. There's a little soft spot in the zone. He's able to get there and sits down in another perfect pass by Jalen Fowler. A&T has been expecting big things from the Marshall transfer since he showed up on campus. Starting to become more of a factor on offense. Leslie, the wide man. And they're showing a two shell right now, too deep. So again, you can find over the middle or do you try to just blow the top off it? Fowler rolls out. Eyes downfield, throws, and that pass is brought in by Bowick. The freshman continuing to play a role on this offense. I'll tell you what. I, I, the last two weeks, Bowick has just really done some phenomenal things. We talked about the touchdown catch at the end of the half against North Carolina Central. Again, you take your route deep, you bring it back, and again, a, night, a lot of time for Fowler to throw the football, find your area, receiver has the big play. First and 10 from the 13. So the Aggies into the red zone yet again. The handoff, Martin, and he walks into the end zone. <laughs> Jermaine Martin, his first touchdown of the season. Steady dose of run, 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 short passing, deep passing in zones, and then come with the little draw play. Great block by Wachuku. The rest of it's just touchdown heaven. Great job there by the guy that was Mr. Touchdown a year ago, 23, two seasons ago, his first of this year, Jermaine Martin. Andrew Brown on for the extra point. And that one is true. Twenty-seven fourteen, North Carolina A and T is on top after a four-play, fifty-one-yard drive in two minutes and twenty seconds, capped off with a Jamain Martin thirteen-yard touchdown run. You talk about how games can flip. Well, you've you've seen it. You know, you felt real good about yourself if you're Robert Morris just before halftime. A and T scores. A&T, you know, Robert Morris doesn't do anything on their first possession. A&T looks like they're driving to get the 27th point. RMU stops them with the interception, but unable to do anything to capitalize on the mistake. Aggies waste very little time mixing up the run and the pass. And you, you, know, and you, you mentioned it a moment ago, but that's a great example for somebody watching home. What do you mean by, you know, we run to throw the ball? Well, A&T was running. Jimmy Martin, the quarterback's running. Run, run, run. So you get those linebackers, you get those DBs with their eyes in the backfield thinking about stopping the run, and then you're able to have time to throw the ball, and you've got some good receivers that value the ball and come get it. That was a very, very impressive answering drive by North Carolina a &T. Brown ready to send this one deep. Win coming up to play it. Crosses the 15. 
We've seen some speed from Wynn, and he is to the 30, but a flag back at the 19. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 28, half the distance to the goal, first down. So that return coming back after the penalty. I think Wynn may have been shaken up on the play also. You know, this, this, this is a great time to talk about the debate, you know, with the new rule the last couple of years about kickoffs so you can fair catch them in essence and get the ball to 25. That, <laughs> what your philosophy is, what you're ready, your coaching staff, that's one of those where I think you got to go backwards, you take the fair catch, you get the ball to 25. One, you don't lose yards on the hole. Two, one of your premier players who I think maybe just got a little cramp or something, yep. uh, you know, doesn't go down and you get a chance to get some momentum. Uh, you have to be sure. You're right, Sam. You have to be sure that it's you're a going to be past yeah. the 25 yeah. every time. Yeah, it's, it's a philosophy. And, and, you know, you fair catch it, and you, you get the ball with no questions asked at the 25-yard line. But you've got a guy like Wynn who we've seen can make some plays in open field. Looks like he's going to be okay. And uh, you, you give him the opportunity to make the play. Robert Morris has really not been able to do – what Bernard Clark would like them to do on offense. Only 55 rushing yards today on 19 carries. This is a team that is supposed to run to throw and yet 174 yards through the air with 14 catches. Well, take the spring out where they only have about 53 yards. The last three seasons, they've averaged 140 yards in that neighborhood running the football. So that's what they want to do. He makes no mistake about it. We're going to run. The Colonials will send trips out to the far side of the field. The handoff. And there is nowhere to go for Jackson. A couple of big hits. Jacob Roberts, the middle linebacker, in to apply the thud. And if this is if you're an RMU fan, this is danger time right now. You you've missed an opportunity to maybe get some points on the board. The Aggies score, you deepen your territory, you're not having success on first down. And remember, we go back to what I said early in this ball game. Seven teams two years ago, but a lot of these same guys back were held to 100 yards or less. Three teams were held to 50 yards or less. So that's what you got to run against. Second and 11 for Robert Morris. Jackson cuts it up. And he is taken down at the 12. Amir McNeil once again. You've got guys, your corners are McNeil and, and Miles Simon. We've talked about him. And Kittles as a safety. And we've already seen Najee Reams have his hands on a couple of balls. These guys, you know, if you, you can't beat them deep a lot of times. And you can't run away from them. And Virginia Tech transfer DJ Crossan still out after yeah. the big injury in the Furman game, but he is back at practice and should be available in a couple of weeks. Well, until he gets on the field, you only got to talk about his potential, but yeah, he took a big blow in the early series against Furman and has been out since then, so we wish him a, a quick recovery. Third and eight. The throw is brought in. Jalen Brown, the freshman, keeps the drive alive. How many times tonight when you've needed to make, move the chains, has Robert Morris been able to do so? They've converted, like we said, to half, six out of eight on third down conversions. And again, a nice pass, a low away throw that only one guy could get, and that being Brown. Up to eight of 11 on third down now are the Colonials. And that's where it pays to have a redshirt senior quarterback. Cool under pressure. The handoff to Jackson. And he is driven into the grass. Guess who? Richie Kittles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about a veteran? Yes. He's been around for a while. He's been around. <laughs> He's been around a few minutes. And his experience, along with his speed, are a definite asset. It allows your other defensive backs on the other side to know they can lock up and man and worry about not netting the guy because you've got guys that can come up and cover, protect the run. And that's what you got out of a strong safety in, in Kittles. Second and 12. Play action. Martin on the move, throws under pressure, and that one will fall out of the hands of Westry. 
dangerous throw by Martin as he was getting taken down to the ground. Well, Martin's not a runner, and that might have been one of those times when you look, you have the backside open, but tried to make a play. And again, Nazi Reams, we've called that name several times this afternoon, had six tackles to begin the half. Not sure exactly how many he's got right now, but that was a huge play to deflect the ball from Westry. Third and long in the closing seconds of the third quarter. Aggies are going to rush three. Keep your eye on Brown, 80. Martin looking. Has some room in front of him. Elects to run, and he is taken down shy of the first down marker. And there is an Aggie down. And that's one of those you were talking about transfers, Robert Porsche. He kind of thought Martin for a moment had an opportunity to maybe make yards, yards a game for the first down, but just too quick a closing speed by Porsche. And he probably took the brunt of that hit landing on Martin. And that may, name might sound familiar Personal to foul. you. No, of course. Oh, wow. A targeting call on defense. Number 94. The previous one is under further review. That, they're, they're calling that on Porsche. Yeah. If I heard the official correctly. He and, did. And I, I got I to gotta see this because if I'm not mistaken, Spencer, and again, I, I don't officiate and, and don't know about TV. Let's, let's take a watch this. This is not the third or fourth game where the Aggies have had a targeting call. Let's see. Keep around 49, 94. That's just a tackle. It's the tackle. If anything, if anything, you've got uh, Taekwon King coming in at the shoulders. Maybe they are confused 94 and 41. That's a great shot by our crew here yeah. in Greensboro. Uh, that, that should not have been flagged. Can we see if we can get that guy? Our, our crew's doing a great job. They're working hard, too. It's hot. They're working. Can you get that shot one more time? We're not synced in necessarily with um, what the officials see, but let's take another look at that. And keep your eye on seat. 94 is Porsche. 41 is King. If anything, it's on 41 for launching, a possible launch. It's not, I do not think it's on Porsche. And if it is, then, you know, again, I have been wrong before. I, and I don't know if when you go back to the replay, if you can actually change who the penalty is on at that Yeah, point. you can. They may have called the wrong number. I mean, that's, that's, this, this, is, this could be correctable. And it could be no target. I don't see targeting. Keep your eye on 41. Does he launch? Does he lead with the head? Yeah, it's 41. It's 41, not 94. Taekwon King, yeah, the Taekwon freshman. Queen, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, yeah. 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 Yep, contact to the head. And I think, I think if you look at this, that's going to be the right call. That's the proper call. Here we go, here we go one more time. Martin's going there. There's 94 on the chase. and Watch 41 coming into your screen right now. And does he lower his head? Does he launch? Yes. There is no targeting on the play. Okay. The down pass. So he left his feet. And so apparently they're trying to say that his contact was above the shoulders at the shoulder pads and then to the helm. Okay. Okay. Well, but it wasn't no Porsche. I knew no, that. No, it wasn't. But as I was saying before, uh, the officiating crew decided to go take a look. Uh, that name might sound familiar to you uh, because Robert's father played 12 seasons with Detroit and was a three-time All-Pro. And they couldn't get targeting call right then when he was playing either. So we see. <laughs> but a good bit of officiating. Go back to the river. Don't, don't be emotional. Make the correct call. And, and that's good on all sides. And now we have another stoppage play clock and that is the end of the quarter that's the end of the third quarter so we head to the fourth quarter here at truest stadium 27 14 north carolina a t leads it on espn3 football is the game of life and it brings the community together white black boys girls flag tackle Football can revive communities. Anybody can play. 
that family value, that brotherhood is everything. It's really what all it's about is just having a good time and being able to play. There's never been a better time to play. Whether it's the practice field or weight room, in class or on game day, we compete down here. We put in work day in and day out to take a step forward towards the Greeks, championships. Our goals, excellence on every level. More than 4,000 student athletes, one attitude. We are the Big South, where winners are made. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Now is the time to get a great deal on Ford Ranger, Ford Super Duty, and the all-new 2021 Ford F-150. Get our best offers of the year and see what built Ford Tough can do for you. Welcome to the show, America. Welcome to the show. For a limited time, get 0% financing for 72 months on a 2021 Ford F-150 during Ford Truck Month. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Twenty-seven, fourteen. North Carolina A&T leads Robert Morris as we head to the final 15 minutes of play here in Greensboro. And A&T starting to really pick it up here towards the end of this one. Well, we, we told you that this was a very good Robert Morris football team. And we thought that this was a good A&T team. A&T's been stretched today. They've had to make plays. Robert Morris has the ability to score the football. They've not been able to take advantage of a couple of opportunities, or this game could be tied, or their corners might even be ahead. They played solid. Now they've got to be able to stand tall defensively. A&T using a lot of their weapons so far in this ball game, and that's why you're seeing it's been spread around, guys catching the ball, guys making plays. And so now this would be important if you're an Aggie fan to see a very, very nice to begin the quarter solid drive and now Pepsi presents what fans like because Pepsi knows what fans like make sure to pick up a nice cold refreshing Pepsi today Pepsi that's what I like George Souders on to punt this away on fourth and three. Short kick. And Banks will let this one roll out of bounds towards the Aggie bench. So another drive starting with decent field position for North Carolina A&T. A&T's averaging about 65 plays a ball game in that neighborhood. They had 67 last week. 69 a couple of games ago and, and they've really done a good job but surprisingly enough this is how efficient the offense has been today 40 plays for 331 yards and once again how's the Aggie ground game going so far 23 attempts for the Aggies on the ground for 177 yards led by Jalen Fowler 68 rushing Baker keeps it on the ground and is stood up after a gain of about two If you're a &T, you, you'd love to have a nice five, six minute drive, wear them down on a warm day in North Carolina and, and put this game away. And if you're Robert Morris, get the Aggies off the field and get your offense. Your offense has done some good things. As we mentioned, 252 yards of total offense for Robert Morris. Find a way to stop them and get your offense going. Fowler, quick throw, Banks. Hauls it in and reaches for the 46. Robert Morris leading in time of possession, 24 minutes and 34 seconds to 20:32. And that was something you thought 
going into this game that they would have to do. That would mean that they're converted on third down. They've done a nice job at 8 or 12, but that would also mean that they were moving and getting into scoring areas, and they haven't really shot themselves in the foot, only one turnover. But uh, they've done some things. They haven't taken advantage of the opportunities they need. Fowler under pressure. Long throw down the seam, and that one is brought in. It's Ron Hunt. Big play, Ron Hunt. You're in man coverage, and Fowler, who is known to have a really solid arm, a good strong arm, plenty of protection, is able to step in the pocket. This is a nicely thrown ball. Couldn't have dropped it in the bucket any better. Nice coverage on the inside that time by, by Tim White, but it wasn't anything to do. That ball was thrown too well. Good pass and a better catch by Ron Hunt. Wachuku in the backfield. It's first and goal from the six, and now there's movement along the line of scrimmage. a and pointing at Robert Morris. Robert Morris pointing at a and And it's been a pretty clean football game in that respect. Four penalties for Robert Morris, only two for the Aggies. False start. Make Offense. it three. Number 60, five-yard penalty, first down. Robert Morris came into this game eighth in the nation in fewest penalties per game. Yeah, they don't. They had no games where they had eight or more. Only had uh, three in their win against Howard. And A&T conversely, in the three football games they played, they've had two games or more with eight penalties and a lot. You know, in their game, uh, the first game of the season against Furman, they've gotten a little better since then. But yeah, that was one of the concerns that Coach Washington had: penalties. Definitely a more disciplined brand of football on display today. Fowler, that one, knocked down and intercepted. Bazzacco. Anelio Bazzacco, the preseason all Big South selection, and there's a flag on the field. Personal foul, rough in the passer, defense. Number and that one will get wiped Half away. This is to the goal, automatic. And there's First an down. injured Colonial on the field. A lot of stuff to, to unpack. Ball was deflected. The second time that's had Bazzacco, a guy we talked about earlier, is one of the leading players on the defensive side for Robert Morris. Gets the interception. Didn't see the end of the play. I have to take another look at that as we go to break to see where the roughing the quarterback occurred. But a huge break for the Aggies. a and Leading it 27-14. We're back after this on ESPN3. Television. Television. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hypnotized by it. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gaping at the screen. That nauseating, foul, repulsive screen. Television. Television. They wonder what they've ever seen. In that ridiculous machine. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> <laughs> Bear Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear, exclusively the Home Depot. First and goal for North Carolina A&T after the penalty. Fowler on the play action. He'll keep it himself and cannot get in. This drive kept alive because of a personal foul. This is roughing the passer and kind of watching it, it looked like it was simultaneous that Brown maybe hit the quarterback, hit the ball, it goes up, Bazako gets the interception. Let me see if we can go back to that. And that's the keeper. And again, plenty of time. Banks trying to lead the way blocking. Chicago makes the tackle, holds him to the one yard line. So it'll be second and goal from the one. Fowler moves under center. Bobbles the snap, he'll roll out, and is dragged down by his face mask. So that'll put a one back in the box. 
That's two personal fouls now on this drive. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 28, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. The okay, players who came out before, before as this, a result of the face mask may remain in the game. Snap. And watch Brown come in 28. And that's, that's not even, that's a no-brainer right there. That's an easy call. There's the flag. And the second time, and Brown needs to be very careful right there. When he jumped up and his helmet came off, and it very easily could have been an unsportsmanlike with, with a possibility of an ejection. But uh, two costly mistakes by Robert Morris on this drive for A&T. Fowler back under center. Clean snap. Baker is stopped short. So one of the things, so Spencer, you, you have to kind of get in a coach's head sometimes. You keep pounding and pounding and pounding the rock, but what does this do in this drive? They didn't score on first down, so you go inside second, but it's moving the clock. So, so even though you're not getting the, the explosion that you want, no harm. You've got the lead. You've got the football. Just relax. You mentioned earlier, time and score. Time and score. Time and score. It's a time and place for everything. And you think you're going to go right inside again? Toss. Baker tries to cut up field. Nowhere to go. And he is cut down by Garrett Fairman. Boy, give a lot of credit to this colonial defense. They will bend, but they will not break. We, we talked about it earlier in the ball game. They had a couple of goal line stands or red zone stands against Central Michigan, and only allowed a field goal in some cases. This time, toss sweep to Baker. Fairman, another one of those guys that doesn't mind hitting you. He's got a lot of energy, makes some plays. May have been a bit of a loss that time. Third and goal from the two. And now you panic a little bit if you're an Aggie fan. You moved the clock, but you didn't get in the end zone. A lot of substitutions comes in, so you got a lot of packages. I think, I think this is some of these little short line RPOs. You've got Baker, but you look at Baker, you look at Fowler inside. Fowler has now stepped back into the shotgun. Keeps it himself. Yeah. Drops it off yeah. to Dobson. Yeah. That's easy. Touchdown A and T. So Nick Dobson, the red shirt freshman tight end, is in for the score. Play fake, and you just send the tight end underneath, and there's too many things for you to defend, and you've got him outnumbered, and Fowler could have easily run to the corner and got the end zone, but you got, you've got a good tight end, gets his first catch, gets his first touchdown, just going the outside. Very well-designed play by a &T. Brown on for the extra point. And that one is good again. 34-14, North Carolina A&T leads Robert Morris with 10.03 to go in this one. We'll take a break. You're watching The Big South on ESPN3. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Big things are happening this year across the South, from the mountains to the coast. The fast are getting faster. The strong are getting stronger and the best is getting better. Get ready to raise your expectations. Get ready for something big. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Big South Football. Whether it's the practice field or weight room, in class or on game day, we compete down here. We put in work day in and day out to take a step forward towards the Greeks, championships. Our goals, excellence on every level. More than 4,000 student athletes, one attitude. We are the Big South, where winners are made. 
Football is a game of life, and it brings the community together. White, black, boys, girls. Flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. Anybody can play. That family value, that brotherhood, is everything. It's really what all it's about. It's just having a good time and being able to play. There's never been a better time to play. Find the best variety of officially licensed merchandise in conference and school branded items at BigSouthStore.com. Gear up with some new apparel or find that perfect gift. Get fully equipped for all your game day fun with BigSouthStore.com. Andrew Brown on to boot this one away. Little squibber. Fielded. And it is Johnson who is tripped up at the 15. Let's see if the ball is in the air, you can fair catch, signal for the fair catch, get the ball to 25 if you catch it in the field of play. But a scribber becomes a live ball, ball like that. That's why you've got to kind of have a game plan who you want to have the football. You think about the yardage that you lose. And once again, uh, you know, Robert Morris finds himself deep in Aggie territory. It'll be first down and 10. So first and 10 for Robert Morris from its own 15. And now down 20 here in the fourth quarter, RMU going to have to go through the air. And they've had some success going through the air. They have. So far today, 187 yards passing. Martin throws this one up and he leads his receiver, Westry, a little too far. And that was a situation where Martin anticipated more pressure maybe than there was. It's got rid of the football a step or so sooner than he needed to because Westry was open in the deep corner. So it'll bring up second and 10 for the Colonials. Martin today, 15 of 27. One touchdown, sacked one time. He'll work with a single back. Quick pass. That screen sniffed out. Westry able to get ahead of the line of scrimmage in game two. This is a veteran football team. A lot of guys returning for this Robert Morris. Their entire defense is back. A lot of the guys played in the spring. Didn't have the success that they wanted in the spring, but got a lot of valuable experience. And you can see this is a team that you know was preseason picked in the Big South number eight. The Aggies were preseason pick number three. You look at the number one and two teams, Kennesaw State, Malmouth. This is an RMU team I think you're going to hear a lot from as the year goes on. It's third and eight. Martin has plenty of time. Throws on the run, and that one is brought in by Brown. He was getting mauled. Brown has had a really good day. Great concentration. Martin does everything he can to keep this drive alive. And then you get McNeil on top of Brown. Really could have got maybe for pass interference. That left arm was hooked a little bit underneath the pads. But a great pass by Martin and wonderful concentration by Jalen Brown, who's had a nice ball game. Again, pressure, pressure, pressure. Gets to the outside, and you can see him open. You can see the hand on him right there as well. Jackson. Takes the handoff and turns upfield to the 34. And now a flag comes in. And you mentioned Brown, four catches, 57 yards today. So it looks like there's going to be a discussion and a couple of penalties. In what has been a relatively clean game, the last few minutes, Dan, we've seen a bunch of laundry on the field. Well, you know what? A lot of these schools didn't play for over 650 days. I know a and We have 2,000 on the play. So they get back ball, in the one dead ball. Offside, defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty, first down. After the play's over, personal foul, striking, offense, number 60, 15-yard penalty, first down. You saw it. 
Trevor Renfro, the Mesa Community College transfer. I mean, he just headbutted a player. Well, that, that's, that's, that's frustration. That is being pounded all game long and you losing your composure. And that is something that I know that uh, Coach Clark and staff were not happy about. You have a positive play, you get a penalty on A&T, and it's pretty much negated by just a bonehead play. You can't let your emotions get the best of you. But every time it does, it hurts somebody, either yourself or the team. Most of the time it's going to be you because you're coming out. And now we have a whistle. <laughs> and they're going to look because he did lead with his head. So right now it's first and ten, but I, I'm wondering if there's some discussion about the spot of the ball. I'm also a little surprised, Stan, that Renfro didn't get the old heave ho. Well, that's what that. I'm saying. That I think they could very easily be looking at several things. Spot of the ball. It was a dead ball personal foul. Did he hit lead with it? I mean, you know, there's a lot of things. I, again, I you know, I, I can barely do this some days. I'm not going to try to start officiating. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised. All right. It'll be first so it looks like and the twenty, change. and on the previous play, the foul against number sixty is unsportsmanlike conduct. That is his first of the game. All right, so it. both things were discussed. Yeah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Great job by the officiating crew. And you can easily see number 60. There's the striking. That's a dead ball play, so the play is over. And then you go 10 yards after that, so it's a first and 20. And that's a great job of uh, uh, fishing. That pass incomplete intended for Brown. Sells out of bounds. It'll be second down and 20 for the Colonials. So it'll bring up second and 20. And as the crew mentioned, Trevor <laughs> Renfro now with one unsportsmanlike penalty against them. Spencer, remember what I told you at the beginning of the game? I said, bad situations. Yeah. And you laughed at that. And so many people do. But there's a reason I tell you these things. You stay out of bad situations. You have momentum. You had an interception. You don't score Robert Morris. You get that situation. A bad situation. Makes it hard to beat a team like a and It's a hold. Flag on the field. Martin in trouble. And he is finally taken down for the sack by Janoris Robertson. Robertson in a whole host Personal of foul. Gold Illegal shirts. hands to the face. Defense, number 91. 15-yard penalty. And automatic. before First down. the sack, Robertson gets flagged for illegal contact to the head. And that might have been why he was able to get there so quickly and put the pressure on Martin. You, using your hands, head and shoulder area in the face. Coach Washington, you know, talking about it to him. Said, we, we work on technique. We work on how to get our hands away and free from the man. Let's see if we can take a look at 91. We're in the middle of the play, and you can see the hand pushed up. It used to be an old trick there. You know, Deacon Jones and those guys back in the day, the head slap made it famous. And you kind of get your wedge your hand up in the, under the uh, helmet and under the buckle. But uh, another big break, this time for, for uh, Robert Morris. RMU keeps it on the ground. Win gets dragged down in between the sticks at the 38. And we've seen some second level speed burst out of Win today. I, I like Win. I think that Win and has the ability to, to break some plays. Jackson, we haven't heard a lot of in the second half of this ball game, but both of those guys can change ball games. And that one is picked off. Jacob Roberts read it the entire way. Jacob Roberts. Back-to-back -back weekends where he's made big plays. Last week, remember, he blocked the punt that led to a touchdown. This time, reads the quarterback's eyes. This is easy. Steps in the route, gets the interception, and that may have been the play that seals the deal for the Aggies. So a &T will take over in Colonial Territory. Watch this. 
drops in coverage, reads the quarterback. He's looking one way and one way only. A bad mistake, one of the first ones he's made intended for Dylan Smith. When a lot Smith could do, Roberts just makes the huge play. Fowler working out of the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Martin. Finds a hole. Keeps going after the initial point of contact. And he's taken down inside the 30. And this is when A&T has been so tough in the last couple seasons under Broadway. And they'll continue on the Sam Washington. You know, they wear you down. They wear you down. You make a couple of mental or physical mistakes. They take advantage of the one end. And then they come back with the explosion play. And you just see Martin now getting hungrier and hungrier. But Roberts, Celebration Bowl a couple years ago, MVP as a youngster. Last week had a block kick. This week has a... An interception, last three ball games. He's been awesome. Martin finds some daylight, lowers his shoulder, and is taken down out of bounds at the 19 yard line, just shy of the first down marker. And no, they'll actually give it to him. They'll say he went out at the 17 on the secondary spot. And now you just see Martin just eating up yards. It's not going to go away with a big stat game again this afternoon. But you can just get the sense that Jermaine Martin is beginning to find his rhythm. Martin, 12 carries, 88 yards so far today, and a touchdown, his first of the season. Fowler keeps it. And he will fall down at the 14, where Bazzacco will fall on top of him. Bazzacco's had a good football game today. He's been around the ball a lot, had the interception. Let me tell you how impressive Martin was a season ago. And I was talking about this last week, but well worth repeating. He had seven games a season ago where he rushed for over 100 yards. But the thing that knocks my socks off, I mean, this, this doesn't make any sense. Take a guess of how many 50-yard touchdowns he had. Take a guess. Five. And I would give you none, but I ain't got time. He had 10 touchdowns, 50 yards or better, two seasons ago. And so every time when you felt like you were stopping him, boom, there goes Martin with a big play. One of them at Duke, you saw the big run. Well, I'm glad you said that. I got something for you. I got something. I'm glad you mentioned that. The handoff. Back to old reliable Martin. Still on his feet, and he's into the end zone. Give him six. Touchdown, North Carolina A&T. Jamaine Martin looking like his old self. Speed, power, balance, great blocking. Cuts back. One man's not going to bring him down. In this case, four couldn't either. Jermaine Martin in the end zone. Brown on for the extra point. And he is through the uprights yet again. Jermaine Martin, a 14-yard rush to the house to cap a four-play, 40-yard drive in two minutes and five seconds. We're back after this on ESPN3. Television. Television. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hypnotized by it. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gaping at the screen. That nauseating, foul, repulsive screen. Television. Television. They wonder what they've ever seen. In that ridiculous machine. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> <laughs> Bear Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear, exclusively the Home Depot. Jamaine Martin continues his strong play as Andrew Brown getting ready to kick this one away. This one fielded by Wynn. 
finds some room and is taken down near the 30-yard line. It's time to name our Hercules Tires strong move of the game. And Zach Leslie, in his return, the score before the half. That's the strong move of the game, brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. He has been strong. <laughs> He's been strong. Good to have him back. So Aggies are beating you by ground. They're beating you by air. And they've done great in special teams. But I'm still going to say this, and this score is not going to indicate how tough a football game this was. This is a very solid Robert Morris team. We're going to hear more out of them as the year goes on. Uh, RMU is going to win a couple of games this year that people think that they probably shouldn't as that long ball is just off target. And now a late flag comes in at the 38-yard lineup, picked up and moved to the 44. Yeah, and, and again, the question would be, was it catchable? Because he, he could, the defender Pass rode him the whole Defense, time on that number route. 24. 15-yard penalty, automatic. The intended receiver First down. was Jalen Brown, the freshman from Kennesaw, Georgia. Yeah, and McNeil and Brown had battled all afternoon. You can take, watch there. See, see, you can't see that other hand, the right hand, but the right hand is on his back, and, you know, it's a little contact, but it's in the open field. Officially got called. Let me first of all go tell you about Martin real quick. Martin had, as I told, what did I tell you? What did I say? Ten, game, ten times he's rushed. Had 50-yard 50 50 touchdown, 50-plus yep. touchdown, and you were talking about the Duke game, and that was 66, and everybody was excited about that. Hold on. Play action. Martin, nowhere to go. Jermaine McDaniel, all up in his face. And remember, McDaniel had the huge sack when RMU was trying to score midway in the first half. Well, this guy, who was a preseason all-conference performer, once again makes the play. It does not disappoint his third sack on the season. But I'm going to tell you about Jermaine Martin if it kills me. I'm going to tell you about it. All right, here we go. Here's what I'm going to tell you. He had 14 20-yard touchdowns or better. But I told you he had 10 50-yarders. And that Duke one was a 66-yarder, I believe, right? But yep. don't forget about the game at Charleston Southern where he had an 84-yard touchdown run. So he's had 84-76, and then that big one against Alcorn. Hey, Jermaine Martin's a bad boy. Aggie's a bad too. Let's go to break. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the New Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> Bear Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> We're paying for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of bear, exclusively at the Home Depot. Second down for Robert Morris. As we have some extracurricular activities after the whistle. They brought in Steve DePaul, who's their yep. backup quarterback. Wasn't really listed on the depth chart. Just city was, but that's okay. And he gets hit. And uh, helmet goes off, but a little pushed and seven, but he's still going to be short on third down. So, you know. So Martin will come back in because the helmet came off. DePaul had one carry heading into this one. Nine of 13 on third down for RMU so far in this ball game. And now a flag in the RMU backfield. Illegal substitution, offense, 12 players breaking the huddle, five-yard penalty, third down. And you could see at the end of the play that uh, Westry was trying to get off the field, so you had one personnel grouping in, you maybe needed another one, and again, those are some of those errors that coaches just really hate because you're not 
concentrating on down and distance, time and score, game situations. It's third down now for Robert Morris. Smith, the motion man. Martin didn't look like he was ready for that snap. And Johnson will get taken down in the backfield. So miscommunication all over the place for Robert Morris and North Carolina A&T able to exploit it. Stuckey and Henry and Roberts, and Roberts just continues to make some plays, had combined for 10 and a half with a 26 tackle for losses that the Aggies had going into this afternoon's ball game. Be interesting when they get the final stats to look and see how many they're credited for today. But again, when a and playing their football, you can't run on them. They force you to pass, and their, and their DBs cover so well. Same with Robert Morris. When they're playing well, they're able to run the ball. Banks fields it. Tries to find some room to work. And he will get taken out of bounds after just a few yards. And you mentioned uh, the running. Robert Morris just 54 yards on the ground today. This after a 180-yard performance against Howard just a week ago. Well, they, they made the plays, and, and they've had some success running the ball. A lot of that now you got to take in consideration has been some sacks and those tackles for loss behind the line of scrimmage. But they've done a really nice job at times of being able to pick up some yards. But this is the thing, and Coach Clark made no bones about it. We're a run-first football team. We want to be a physical team. They, they've not really disappointed me, I don't think. North Carolina a t going with Kingsley Ifidi. As the quarterback, he played against Duke, went 10 for 19. Also had 15 carries for 83 yards and two scores in that one. As he gets taken down after a gain of a couple of inches. And you got to feel like he'll never put it in the ear in this ball game, in this final two and a half minutes of the game. But where we're thinking in the head, Aggies are home next week as they play Northern Alabama, another one of the newcomers to the Big South where Charleston Southern travels up to Cropolis, PA, Moon Town, shipping it here, right near the airport. Just go to Pittsburgh Airport, you fly right over, you're right there at, at uh, Robert Morris, and they, Charleston Southern takes on Robert Morris. Remember two years ago, you know, Robert Morris, excuse me, uh, Charleston Southern A&T had a battle down in Charleston, South Carolina. So we're in the Big South play, and uh, we're looking forward to following both of these teams and everybody else the rest of the year. Counter handoff to Martin as he tries to barrel through the pile. You know, Stan, if Edie's in right now, it's still one of my favorite all-time transfer stories. Uh, a and goes to ECU, beats the Pirates. Ifidi plays in that game for ECU, sees what's going on on the sideline across the way and says, I want to be over there. And so the next year, he shows up in Greensboro. Threw a couple of passes, picked up about 15 yards rushing, completed about three out of five in that ball game against the Pirates. And I don't blame him because he was on the winning side. And you remember, you remember that key phrase that Coach Washington said. I won't say it right now, but that was a right. Hey, everybody remembers that, and it came true. So and that meme's still all over Twitter. <laughs> Ifidi runs, throws, finds Hunt. And that will keep the drive alive as he earns a first down. What's so funny about that, and, and you know, on the personal note that you love, that was a historic game, the first time A&T had played East Carolina, and it was a continuous string of ECU, I mean, of A&T knocking off, you know, powered big-time teams and get a chance to broadcast it. And then today to be a part of the first broadcast of the Big South as A&T makes the transition, as, as will Robert Morris. Really, you know, it's one of those things you can sit back, you know, 30 years from now, and say, yeah, the very first time they played, we were here and we were able to bring it to the homes across the country. So that's a, it's an honor. It's an honor to call this ball game. So, hey, good luck to both teams as the season goes on. And that will do it from here in Greensboro. Our final score, North Carolina A&T 41, Robert Morris 14. We'll take a quick timeout and wrap things up from inside the broadcast booth. As you see, the coaching staff starting to embrace. So we're just going to keep it here, I was told. So, Stan, 41-14, the final score. 
as we look at the Hercules Tires final stats of the game. North Carolina A&T, 34 carries, 224 yards on the ground, 222 yards through the air on 16 catches. As Jalen Fowler, 15 of 20, two touchdowns, 206 yards passing. Jamaine Martin, 105 yards on the ground, 14 carries, two touchdowns. He looked like his old self. And that should worry some of the other teams in the Big South. Both of these teams will be better in a couple of days, a couple of games than they were today. And they were both very, very impressive in their own rights in different ways. Very impressed with Robert Morris come down and really compete and play as the coaching staff thought they would. And they did some things good. They made some mistakes, and they weren't able to take advantage of Aggie mistakes. And when they didn't do that, the Aggies certainly are going to do that. A very impressive ground game by North Carolina A&T. They threw the ball very well. And once again, Aggie special team stepped up. So, again, a and getting better and better. Robert Morris knows they've got some work to do, and they're going to get better too. But it's a very historic day, the first game the two teams have ever played in this conference. And we got a chance to be a part of it, and that makes you feel special and a good win for North Carolina A&T State University. The first ever Big South game played in Greensboro, North Carolina, is in the books. And North Carolina A&T wins it 41-14. For our Greensboro base crew and my partner Stan Luter, I'm Spencer Turkin saying so long from Greensboro. You've been watching Big South football. On ESPN3, our final score, North Carolina A&T 41, Robert Morris 14. Good afternoon, everybody.